Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I mean, I don't know what time it is at your time zone, but it's noon, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Nardus, and I'll be your tutor for today. And we're going to talk about data science workflow. Uh, so, before we start, uh, would anybody like to, have to share their knowledge on this topic? Anybody? Is anybody willing to? Or is this a new concept for you guys? Okay, go ahead. Chukudi, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Please start by pronouncing your name, please. Go ahead. All right, thank you so much. You, you did well. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure if I had the question clearly, but my intuition says you're talking about the data science workflow. Yes. Okay, the workflow from my understanding starts with um, a problem statement or a question you want to answer using data. So if you've been able to drill, so the first thing you need to do is to drill down to specific questions that are answerable by data. Then you can now go launching and looking for how to have access to this data, especially if it's not if it's not already within your within your reach. Where there are different sources, it could be from database. Currently, I think we are doing something on Twitter and all that. When you get this data, it may not be in the right format, which means you need to put it in the right format for whatever purpose you want to use it for, either for visualization, the part of call up and data pre processing, and all that. And afterwards, if it's visualization you want to do, you can go into that direction to gain more insight about the data. If you're doing or building a model for it, you could move further to deciding which model do I need to use for this particular data? Because the model performance can vary, all right? I might want to do a little bit of comparison between which model um, best suits the problem you're working on. Then you do the evaluation of the model deployment. And after deployment, from what I learned, there's still a bit of maintenance that goes on because along the line, the model gets degraded, maybe due to the data impute or the data source and the like. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, that was very good description. Uh, anybody else? I see you have, we have Johannes. Maybe Johannes, do you want to? Okay. Okay, uh, as the name indicates, my name is Johannes. As the name indicates, data science work for noise. I stay in data science uh, from uh, problem identification to maybe deployment of data, uh, which is uh, the data scientist must follow uh, in this step developing the data uh, and the project. I think I understand like this. Thank you. Yes, that was a precise description. That's good. Thank you, Johannes. Uh, anybody else? I'm sorry, I can't yes. pronounce this name. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you start by pronouncing your name? Yes, uh, I'm Maurice. Maurice from Benin. Uh, in my opinion, data science workflow. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay. Continue. Okay. In my opinion, data science workflow is uh, a kind of uh, uh, you have uh, an objective to attain, and you try to find where you can find those data, the data to answer the question that you have, 
and how are you going to prepare the data to analyze the data mining to analyze the data to give uh, to have your answer for your question all those process uh, uh we can call all those process as data science workflow thank you okay thank you uh does anybody want to go next or should we start the tutorial okay let's just have some Uh, someone can go next. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mohammed. Hello. Yeah. I'm Shuzias from Benin. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Hi. Hello. Okay. Uh, in my understanding, data science workflow is uh, the process, the procedure when we we have to to do a data science project. Then I think there are many steps. First, we have to have a research question to define our problem. After we have to, we have to collect the data. And after that, we have to process the data to analyze them using a model. When you have our model, we have to test the model. And after, assess the model and so on and so forth. So for me, it's about the different steps that we have to follow when we have to do a data science project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe uh, one person can go next and we can start the tutorial. Maybe Ajat, do you want to speak? Um, sorry, did you call me? Yes, you have your hand up. And... Yes. yes. Okay. Um, uh, data science was just, as they've said, a set of procedures, the step by step, uh, the set of tasks we perform to go from understanding the problem to acquiring our data to modeling it, analysis, and uh, we either report on what we get or we deploy. And then it 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 goes round and round again. We and then find another problem. We get another data, and it's just uh, it's based on the objective and the aim. But it's it's similar and similar from one project to another. Okay, thank you. That, that was a good description. I see most of you have a basic understanding, which is good. Uh, Mohammed, do you want to go or should we just start? Okay, uh, hi everyone. My name is Mohammed from Egypt. Uh, I think that the science is uh, uh, mainly about uh, trying to extract uh, useful futures uh, for uh, uh, the company you work for, for your customer mainly. So the first stage you do is reprocessing the data, try to um, uh, like make it uh, ready for the next stage, stage. that is about using the computational power we have in our uh, nowadays computers to try to uh, visualize the data instead of uh, doing it manually using uh, I mean humans uh, to try to extract uh, to find the, the great futures or the useful futures that uh, the customer need to look for to make decisions for his company or uh, for uh, to gain, uh, for example, if it's a business, uh, gain more money or something like that. So it is mainly about trying to use uh, different techniques, including machine learning, like support to vector machine or random forest to extract the new features so that uh, I can look at it and make my decision. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, everyone. That was a good description. Uh, so let's just start the tutorial. So uh, data science workflow is just going to define the phases and the steps we take in a data science project. And having a well-defined workflow is useful in that it provides a simple way to, uh, to work as a team or if, even if you're working alone, it's a good way to structure and to have 
a clear working phase or steps. So uh, to start, as data scientists are responsible for discovering the insights of from a massive amount of data, which could be structured or unstructured data to help meet a specific business business needs or goals. So, uh, so the common uh, so the common workflow data science workflow approach is the CRISP, which is which is the standardized uh, which is a cross into cross industry standard process for data mining. There are, there are other uh, the process which is the Osman which runs with Posm or so it was the first uh, approach and this one is the most st standardized approach to define the data mining process and it has five or six basic steps oh, so the first one is the business understanding so like you said it's the first one and most of you described it here we need to understand what the business goal is what the project what needs to be pr produced from the project and we need to have a clear understanding of the pro projects and the business goals. So here we need to ask good questions. This is where we uh, understand the project. So, so uh, we start by asking the questions, how do we measure the progress towards the solution? And how do we start approaching the, pro the problem? And what do we need to do if we have the data? So we need to have a clear project plan. We need to have the tools and the tech stacks we need to follow for each process and for each stage. So this is the first step that we need to really focus on. So if we don't have the basic understanding of the project, uh, we, might need, we might miss the project objective and we might need to come back. So make sure to have a clear understanding of the business objectives. So, so uh, we might, a project could be to predict or to estimate. So we need to know what the objectives are. So the second one is the data understanding. So we need to, we have uh, collected data, which is relevant data. It has to be a relevant data. We don't want the data that can, uh, that cannot be used in a process or so in the modeling. So we need to have a clear and relevant data and we need to start describing this data. So uh, and we start by understanding the data, what kind of data do we have, and we start uh, exploring this data. So we start by visualizing the data, we start by statistical way of uh, describing the data and assessing the quality of this data. So this is the, the phase that takes most time, in my opinion, where we collect most of the data. So the third step is data, the data preparation. So here we prep the data, we clean the data. Uh, the data might need a lot of cleaning and uh, it, might, it might be some, usually when we collect data, some data might be missing, some data might be misplaced or misformatted. For example, usually when we have dates, some people use different formats of dates. So uh, when we have names or some, or some, what do you call it? Uh, some uh, misspellings that may exist in our data. So we need to clean all that and we start prepping the data. So we process the data, we start data integrating, combining some data frames or we need to drop or so we need to Decline some data that's not needed in the process, so we reject. We might have some rejecting features, and we uh, we might have outliners that might affect the modeling or the process. So we need to have a clear uh, data, a clean data that can be, that we can use for the processing, for the modeling part, and in, and we need to have a standard. So we need to have a clear and uniform uh, data that we can use for the uh, steps to follow. So we need to have a clear standard, a uniform format across all features. So we need to, so we need to standardize and pre-process the data. Is that a question? Can you hear me? Is it? 
Is my audio audible? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay, sorry, Gilbert, I might be from your side, I guess. So, okay. And, uh, and the fourth step is to understand the, to start with the modeling. And in data understanding and pre preparation, you need to determine the relationship between the features also. So you need to examine if the data or the features are correlated with each other. So we, you start uh, visualizing the data, you, you start using uh, statical approaches. So you might use like tools like heat map, correlation maps, and you start plotting to understand and to get insights from the data. And you learn the distributions of the points. So if some data might be uh, above, way above the mean or the average, and that might affect the data of the, or the modeling. So if there are outliners and that could affect the modeling, you need to start uh, cleaning them out or you might need to drop them or you might use other approaches to standardize them and it might affect the overall distribution. So you here you might use box plots to plot and see if we have uh, an outliner or a statical summary when you display the mean and the max or the uh, detailed description of the data which can show you if there are outliners or it shows the general description of the data. And you can also use histograms or bar charts. And uh, you might use dimensional reduction or feature engineering. So you might use PCA if you need to uh, principal component analysis with PCA's principal component, component analysis. So you might need to reduce some features and you might need to handle the feature engineering. So the fourth step is the modeling. So, uh, here you need to decide which models do you want to consider. So depending on your business objective, what you are trying to um, solve, the problem you are trying to solve, you decide on the modeling or the types of modeling to to follow. And, uh, so you need to train. So you need to start training the model. You need to state. You need to test the schemas, and using the data you've. Uh, collected before and that's already prepared and cleaned for you. So it's going to be just uh, splitting this data into the training and testing. So feeding this training data to your model and start modeling and then you start testing your data with the other with the data sets you have already uh, split into. So uh, yeah, and, the, and you start building and training your models. So this is you might need it's an iterated process. You might need to redo, and you might assess the model performance. Okay, so I'll try to speak louder. So you assess the models, and you you assess the model performance, and then you, if you if you have problem with the if you have problem with the data you have that you have collected or you might need to go back and you might need to do more data preparation you might need to do here usually when we start modeling we see or we notice some outliers or more problem with the data so you, you go back and you uh, prep the data more and you based on the feedback from the modeling you uh, customize your mode your data for the modeling so this it's a back and forth process and after you're finished with the model, so you de decide if, if it's actually ready for uh, deployment or if it's actually if, uh, if, if it meets the business understanding or the, the purpose you are trying to meet. So uh, in evaluation, you check if the models actually solve the business problems. Do they uh, do they match with the the idea you have at the first starting the project and are the models selected really uh, effective or or not or you can if you need other models if you need to uh, check or explore other models that can be more helpful or more efficient so you review the process and if 
is the and if the modeling actually meets your criteria and you check if it's actually ready to be deployed or if it's ready to be launched. So if not, and if this is something usually happens, a model cannot, may, may not meet the business objective or you may not be as, as efficient as needed or might not meet the requirements. So you usually go back and check if you have uh, missed some parts and so it might be from your business understanding, you might go back and check if the understanding is uh, not right, or you might uh, check if your data is not prepared or you need more preparation, or you might need another modeling approach to, uh, so you might need other modeling techniques. So you go back and it's an iterative process. So if all, if the all processes are met according to plan, if it's the, if the outcome is great and you start the deployment process so you determine the next step and uh, if the process if the reviewing process is successful then you determine the next step which is uh, the, the deployment step so here you need to have a clear deployment plan and you uh, even after one deploying you need to monitor and you have you need to have a maintenance plan after deployment. So you, even after the deployment, you need to have a consistent monitoring plan or maintenance plan for the for the projects. And you need to have a report that describes the workflow and you need to have a report on how to use the the project and um, and if actually from the business objective. So you need to have a report from from the business perspective, and you need to have a review based on the project and based on the re in the report. So that's the basic six steps to data science. So I think that's it. If you have questions, if it's not clear, then go ahead and ask a question. So. Okay, so okay, Margaret, is that a question? Um, yes. So, with the two data sets that we were given, are we supposed to build? Um, our model with the global data and then test it with the the other data. Okay, yes, uh, you're right. So there is the, the second data is used to check the model. Uh, the yes. Does that answer your question? Or... Um, mm, no, it really. Um, so the data that we were given, the global one, that's the one we we'll use to build the model, right? Yes. We train the model with the first data, exactly. And, and then you use the second one to test. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, do we have another question? Yes, Mohammed. Actually, my question is about is there is any guidelines that uh, my guide us where uh, doing this cycle? I mean, uh, I see here from the graph evaluation, but is there is any guideline like make it uh, make it in time or short? Uh, I like I, some time I feel we are in like in a very dark. Uh, room and we try to find any any light to uh, 
uh, follow it. So is there is any best practice or guidelines that help us uh, try to build it in a good way? Yes, exactly. This is the methods that you need to follow to perform a project. So it's best if you follow the steps. It's the an industrially standardized approach. So yeah, you need to follow the steps. Is that your question, um, right? Yeah, yes, some related. I mean, uh, I, the first part uh, that I want to ask, I mean, for, for, for example, modeling, how do I select the best model? For example, machine learning model. Uh, I have a variety of tools or models. So how can I know this, this is, will be the best model that will get, get me the, the result we need. For example, the data, excel, uh, the pre-processing the data, the data itself. So how can I know the, uh, this uh, representation of data will be fit my problem well, uh, instead of using another representation of the data. And this uh, something, uh, I, I mean, my question is related to these things. How can I, uh, let me put it in another way. How can uh, I uh, choose the uh, right parameters for uh, my model and the right model to get the best result? So uh, for a project, I guess it depends on the business objective you're trying to meet. And you can have a different type of models. There are different type of models. You might need to research more on the modeling type. So you might need regression or you might, there are different type of models. So it's, this actually is, it depends on the objective you're trying to meet. So you, there is no one standard for choosing a, a model. So you need to have the data you have or the, uh, the, the objective you're trying to meet. So, so I don't think you have one standard for choosing a moving model. I see, thanks. So it is all about trial and error. Yes. Try this model. Okay. Yes. Thanks. You must perform better, so you might need to try and test that bit when you're done. Okay, does that answer? Okay, do we have another question? Uh, hopefully, that was a clear presentation for you guys. Most of you don't. Oh, okay, now, yes, go ahead. Yes, Nahum. Hello. Hello. Yes, okay, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question was uh, when splitting the data set, uh, if there are any I'm sorry uh, can you repeat your question uh, when splitting the data sets uh, before training the data uh, what are the speaking criteria? Actually, we have two data sets, right? So, already well, you have the first one for training, right? And the data, have you seen the document? You have the second one for tasting, so you might it's already supported for you. And you have to make sure when you are tasting the 
and you have, when you're testing, make sure that you're using a different data sets from the training. So in, our, in this project, it's already, it's already split it for you. So you, you don't need to worry about that in this project. Uh, sorry about the background noise. I'm trying to be in a very crowded place. So, Nahum, um, does that answer your question? Was that your question? Okay, maybe you can ask on um, Slack. Uh, that's okay. Okay, uh, thank you. I was having a mic uh, issue. Oh, okay, all right. Maybe you can use Slack. Also, if this is okay. Uh, so, any more questions? Have you guys understood the presentation today? Oh, okay, get on. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Are you hearing me? Peter. Okay, uh, thank you for your nice uh, explanation about data science. But uh, mainly I have one question, and that is uh, a data science project methodology uh, have different approaches. The first one is uh, CRISP-DM, SEMA, uh, and also KDD. But you said uh, uh, CRISP-DM is preferable. So why, why and how it is preferable for data sciences? What about others? Is there any uh, reason to select CRISP-DM? Okay, is your question why choose CRISP DM? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so CRISP is actually the standard data mining process across multiple industries, and it's the most well known framework that you use to define the data science workflow. So uh, you can use others, but it's the well known and it's the standardized approach to the workflow. That's why we, uh, we, choose this and it's applied in most indus industries so yeah it's the standard okay thank you okay there's also the awesome the another approach it has five it has five steps and it is obtain scrub explore model and interpret so you might use that as also if it's suitable but this is the standard approach. That's why we've chosen this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yes, um... You can you can ask a question. Um, I might go. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. What's your question? Um, you've said that the global tweet data is a training set, and uh, an African one is a test set. Am I right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, can we follow can we follow another approach that uh, we can divide the, the two data sets the, um, the global and african one as uh, by their own because um, i expect that uh, there will be an inside difference between uh, the global uh, tweets and african tweets i think Yes, that's actually a good approach. I think it's better. You can use that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, do we have more questions?
Yes, Stablin, was that your question? Did I answer your question? Mm. We have selected a creation framework, uh, right? Uh, but may not be dependent on the problem type. May not be dependent on the problem type. I don't understand the question. Uh, Can you the question? Are we going to uh, are we going to use the CRISP framework uh, throughout the course uh, in case? Yes. Uh, what 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 I'm expecting is uh, it varies on the problem type. So uh, even if your problem type varies, this is the basic steps you need to follow. So most of the time, I think it's, it's best if you follow the steps. And it might be iterative. You might iterate between the steps or the phases, but I think it's best practice if you if you follow the six steps. So I said. Okay. Yeah.